interject before we go? Do you, do you have any other questions for, for Ellie that you want to uh, sort of uh, end us on? Yeah, you know, I, I guess just, just to kind of wrap it up, uh, one thing that I'm really curious to ask is what you feel like the future of attacking machine learning will be you know, as AI and ML becomes a bigger part of a society and, you know, uh, is responsible for more and more things, you know, we just saw, you know, we just saw in, in the news in the United States that the U.S. military is going to have autonomous drones that have no human interaction and will be fully functional uh, with no human interaction in terms of AI. And like, you know, I just look at that kind of thing as kind of like, well, this is kind of crazy, but I guess, you know, when I think about today versus how we were 10 years ago, you can go on the dark net now and for $5,000, you can buy a very sophisticated web and phishing attack package, uh, you know, basically a SaaS tool. Um, do you think, like, what does the future hold for attacking machine learning, attacking uh, AI? And do you think that like in the future in like 2025, the attack surface is going to be within machine learning primarily uh, or... I guess you know if you kind of put on put on your hacker hat from uh, from from days past. Like, how how do you think how do you think this this will all unfold? And kind of what's what's the future of uh, of uh, attacking machine learning? All right, so that's a long question. I, I, <laughs> I, I, no, that's, that's a long one. We might, we might have. I don't know if I can do it in eight minutes. Maybe I'll take a little bit more time if you don't mind, because that's, that's a very important question. You you actually touch on the hardest question of the field, right? I think you, you, so there is multiple part to your question. So I'll, I'll try to go one at a time and maybe I'll let you tell me if that makes sense to you because the first thing we need to go back very, 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 very at the beginning and that's, that's where we need to start. And I, I promise I'll talk to you about the Gantt thing in, in a few minutes, I promise, but let, let, let's start with the beginning because I think it's important to always go back to first principle. What are we trying to do? So I'll take Gmail as an example because it's probably the most well-known and easy to conceptualize. And you know we can talk about that context. I think it applies to everywhere, but I think it's easier if we take a concrete example. So what are we trying to do? What we try to do is to say there is a line and this line is what goes into your inbox or what goes into your spam box. So in a way, we try to make a binary decision. So very much like an access control of what goes in and what goes out. So we don't remove it. We put it into a spam folder, although very few people go into the spam folder. I don't know, Chris, when was the last time you looked at your spam folder? Um, earlier this morning, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit compulsive. So, <laughs> but okay. yeah, your, 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 point, your point is taken. I've, I've, I've lost some pretty, uh, almost lost some pretty amazing uh, emails in a spam folder. It's, it, the problem has gone that it's gone the other way around where it's, uh, there might be something I actually need in there, but, but your point is taken anyway. I'm yeah, sorry. exactly. Right. So we make a line, right. And the line is we make them in the spam folder. They are also things which do not go into your spam folder. There are also things that we literally block like malware. So malware right. don't go to your spam folder sure. uh, because that's too risky. We would put things in a spam folder. So now we have kind of this two line. What goes into the spam folder? What goes into, into your inbox? And the problem is this line do not exist. It's not like an all and nothing. It's not like you know the password, you don't know the password, or you have the security key or you don't. It's what is the intent behind what you want in your inbox. And that's what abuse is about, is how do we learn the decision boundary of the problem? That's really, if you really want to go super precise on or like abstract and really zoom in onto what we try to do, that is our job. And so we need to learn this boundary. Uh, this boundary applies to everything. It's like, if you have a form, you have to make a decision which comment are acceptable and which comment are not acceptable, which again, depend on the topic, depend on the topic of the blog, depend on your audience, depend on the settings, depend on many things. So basically what abuse try to do is to use statistical learning, machine learning for all of that, to infer what the decision bond is, because to be honest, we don't know. And it's not humanly trackable, right? And so that that the first thing which is to understand is we can't express it with a rule, otherwise it would be what we would have done. Don't, don't use machine learning because you, you want to use machine learning. Use machine learning because it is doing things you cannot do. 
Uh, some people will say that machine learning is the last resort of the incompetent. Uh, for me, it's more like the last resort of uh, you, the problem exceeding your brain capacity. New episodes of the Cyberwork podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things Cyberwork.